Cat Cooks. Today we are going to be cooking my creamy chicken mixed mushroom and bacon tagliatelle. We're also going to do a little side of garlic bread with that. It'll be very similar to the garlic bread we made on the spaghetti bolognese video, except with this one we're going to be using a store bought loaf to show you how we can do it a little simpler. The first thing I want to do here is get everything prepped. I want to get the bacon chopped up, the mushrooms chopped up, and I want to get the chicken breast chopped in half. So we're going to do that first. With the chicken breast, we're just going to cut these in half so they cook a bit quicker. Save them from drying out. The way we're going to cook this chicken today should leave you with some really nice, moist chicken. It shouldn't be dry. The way we're going to do this it should really hold the juices and be really nice and moist when we eat this. Chicken's done, so we can move that aside. Just give my board and that a quick wipe down. Got 10 rashes of bacon here. I'm just going to dice all this up. That will do for that. Just move that aside. Then finally for the chopping, I've got this tub of all different mixed mushrooms. Just want to get all these chopped up. As you can see, there's a lot of different types of mushroom here. This will really add to the flavour. So that leaves us with 300 grams of chopped mixed mushrooms. So we've got our mushrooms, our bacon, and our chicken all ready now. First thing we're going to cook is the chicken. Now before I cut this, I took the chicken out of the fridge for about 20 minutes just to allow it to come up to room temperature. When you do that, it just stops the chicken shrinking as much and helps with the cooking process. First thing we want to do is grill the chicken. Now you can use a frying pan or a griddle pan or whatever you've got for this. I'm going to use my griddle plate. So I'm just going to get this warming up. Once that's heated up, a bit of olive oil and put all your chicken on here. You want to cook these through on both sides, make sure you don't overcook it, you really want to keep your eye on this. So while the chicken starts, I'm going to get this warming up, I'm going to add a bit of butter in here and then we're going to start frying off the bacon. Just want another butter in here, let that melt down, make sure you keep your eye on your chicken, don't forget about your chicken. And once that butter's melting, add your bacon in. I've got to cook this through and get it really nice and crispy. Don't forget about your chicken. Probably could use a flip now actually. They're coming on nicely. Keep stirring your bacon until this is nice and crispy. So that bacon is just starting to golden up and crisp up now, so I'm going to take that out of there. Take it out carefully, I still want the butter and the fat in there. You'll notice if you're taking out this, your pan's going to be getting a bit sticky, don't worry, we're going to take care of that later and that's going to really give us some nice flavour. Once you've got your bacon out, we're going to add the mushrooms to that pan now, with the fat and the butter still in there, we're going to get these nice and golden. You want to try and keep these moving about quite regularly, just want to get these nice and golden and caramelised. A chicken should be about ready to come off now, so I'm going to take these off. And then those are going to continue to cook while they're cooling down. So you need to really make sure you take them off at the right time so they can rest and continue to cook through. So we'll get these nice and caramelised. They're starting to get there. So now our mushrooms are starting to go a nice golden colour. You can add the bacon back in there now. And then, to get all that nice stuff off the bottom of the pan, one large glass of dry white wine. Just want to cook this through, get the alcohol burnt off. Really make sure you go along the bottom of the pan here and just try and get all this nice crispy stuff off the bottom of the pan because that's going to really be some nice flavour added to this. You see all that crispy stuff is coming off the bottom of the pan now. This alcohol will be burnt off very soon. Once the alcohol is burnt off you want to add 300 millilitres of chicken stock. Next you want 300 millilitres of double cream. So then you want to put your garlic in 
I've got these frozen crushed garlic cubes which I've used before. This would probably be the equivalent of about half a bulb of garlic if you were to crush it yourself. You want to add these in now, then we want to bring this to the boil and let the garlic cubes melt. While we're waiting for this to come to the boil, I'm going to get the garlic butter ready for the garlic bread. So I've got a big blob of butter here. I'm going to put that on the heat and get this melting down. To that I'm going to add another three of these garlic cubes. So if you're making this and this, you're going to want a whole bulb of garlic, half in here, half in here. As this butter's melting, I'm just going to add a bit of parsley in here and some chives. So the cream's coming to the boil now, I've got to leave this to boil off a bit and really thicken up. This garlic butter mix is just about finished now. So that can come off. This is continuing to boil and really thicken up now. So as we wait for this to thicken, we're going to get on with this garlic bread. It's got a nice tin tiger loaf here. It's just to sort of show you that you ain't got to mess about baking your own gluten or your own bread if you don't want it. You can use store-bought bread to use the same sort of method we did with the garlic bread last time. So the same as last time again, we want to cut this into cubes without cutting all the way through it. And once you've gone that way with it, just want to try and cut it down the middle really. And then the same as last time, look, that leaves you with lots of little chunks of bread, like this. So if you can, just try and sort of spread this out a little. I mean, you can even just sort of wedge your knife in there a bit if you want, look. Just Get that so it stays a bit open. Get a bit of grated cheese on this now. And carefully remove your knife. And just open these side bits up and just work the cheese into the sides as well. Then while you move your bread, onto a tray that's already covered in foil. Take that lovely garlic butter that we just made a minute ago and just get that poured into these gaps. Just get that in there. Just help it work its way in. So then with the foil, you just want to cover this up. And that then wants to go in the oven, gas mark six for about 15 to 20 minutes. Then our next step is the pasta. Get a pan, add some boiling water. Give that a bit of salt. We'll bring that back to the boil and we'll add our pasta. I've just got some dried tagliatelle. You can get fresh, still can get whatever you want. So once that's boiling again, carefully add your pasta in. So then we just want to leave our sauce, carry on thickening up, leave that on a simmer. Wait for your pasta to cook, that's going to be about 7 to 8 minutes. Then once the pasta's cooked, we'll add that into here, get our chicken chopped up, get that added in, get a bit of parmesan added in, mix it all together, and then we should be about ready. See the sauce is really starting to thicken up now. That was up to here when we started, and it's gone down a lot now. So what I'm going to do now, now the pasta's nearly cooked, I'm going to get this chicken sliced up. Gonna cut this into little strips. This is still really nice and juicy. So the chicken's chopped, pasta's ready now, so I'm gonna get the pasta, just ladle this off into here, just make sure it's drained off as I'm doing it. Doesn't matter if we get a little bit of starchy water in it, because I'd usually add a little bit anyway, so this just saves me having to add it if it still comes in with the pasta. If you find your sauce has got a little bit too thick, the water from the pasta is the best thing to just like thinning it out a little bit. So that's the pasta in. Now I'm going to add the chicken in. Now I'm just going to give this a little seasoning with some salt and pepper. Get all this mixed in. 
And then the last step is to create a bit of parmesan over this. You don't want to add this too early, you want to make sure it's the last thing you do, otherwise you're going to just lose the flavour from the parmesan. So we just want to work this parmesan in here, just get it all nice and melted into all the pasta and the sauce and everything. And then I think it's safe to say that's about ready for serving. So with our tagliatelle ready now, let's get the garlic bread out. Let's open this up. Oh, the smells coming from that. You can see the garlic's all melted in now with the bread and the cheese is all melted. So it's going to be really nice. Now you can see, like, if I just pull a bit out, look, look at how nice and garlicky that is. So I've got a bowl, I can just serve a bit of this up. And while I remember, let me put a bit in a tub to freeze for this month's Willet Pizza. Now, I often make this and save a bit aside without the pasta in and this goes really well on pizzas and in calzones. I've never tried it with the tagliatelle pasta before. So we'll see how it goes. But this is a really, really nice mix to make up to put in a calzone. It's really nice. So that's our finished cheesy garlic bread. A portion of our creamy chicken, mushroom and bacon tagliatelle served up. And quite a lot of it left. So the only thing left to do now is give this a taste. so well together the bacon tastes great in there the way you cook this chicken it gives it a really nice taste to it as well it stays nice and juicy and then because we've got an assortment of mushroom taste get so many different flavors coming through from the mushrooms and of course we did put quite a lot of garlic in that as well so you get a really nice taste of the garlic quite a big favourite in our house and it's probably one of my favourite pasta dishes to make. Try a bit of this garlic bread we made. Mm. That's really good as well. Give a dip, give a dip into this sauce lot and just... Mm. That is amazing, that honestly. It's just... This is a dish I highly recommend you give a try. It's really simple to do, to be fair. It's not too difficult. So if you do the garlic bread this way, if you can get a bloomer, get a bloomer. When I went to the shops, didn't have any bloomers left. All they had was this, so I thought, well, that will do. We can make do with that. But if you can get a bloomer, it does work better with a bloomer because you can cut it into squares better, but that's still really nice. That will be everything for today. I'm most definitely going to go and eat this and quite a lot of that.